in cardiology and especially in echocardiography, of course, we focus on the heart. But not always does the truth lie within the heart and four chambers, but there are other organs and structures to scan as well. So this is a story about the heart and the intestines. One day I was in the echo lab and the colleague called, can you do an echo? I have a patient, he developed severe dyspnea and I don't know why. The patient is in palliative care and my question is, does the patient have a pericardial effusion? So of course I said yes and Richard was sent to the echo lab and then I met Richard. He had a known carcinoma of the esophagus weighing only 43 kilograms. He presents in the echo lab truly in severe pain and severely dyspneic. Well, the questions for the echo are not only the heart, if there is pericardial effusion, but I would go further and also evaluate the lungs for pruel effusion and basically whatever we can find with the help of ultrasound. We started with the heart with a peristernal long axis view. And what is striking immediately is that there is definitely not a relevant pericardial effusion present. Probably around the left ventricle, also probably around the right ventricle, there is a small pericardial effusion, but it's definitely not relevant for the patient. Also in this view, we see on the left-hand side, the standard peristernal long axis view, left ventricular function seems normal, also right ventricular function does not seem to have a severe problem. And the valves are also, at least from the B mod aspect, okay. On the right-hand side, we see a focused view of the right ventricle and the right atrium. Also in this view, the tricuspid valve does seem, at least from the B mod image, normal. The right ventricle with a normal contraction and again, no severe pericardial effusion. In an atypical view of the peristernal long axis, we do see that there is an effusion. Now we can see it more clearly, the black structure surrounding the heart. But as this is an atypical view and it's only seen clearly in this view, we have to summarize that this is not hemodynamically relevant. But as you all probably know, we have to move to the subcoastal view. Of the subcoastal view of the heart, we see the findings from before we see preserved left ventricular and preserved right ventricular function, at least from the visual aspect, normal valves, and a small circumferential pericardial effusion. We do see more free fluid in the abdomen, so ascites, but that is not the scan now. We have to summarize that the heart is probably not the main problem. There is no relevant pericardial effusion, which was the initial question. Probably there is a pericardial carcinosis, but the effusion is definitely not hemodynamically relevant and left ventricular and right ventricular function seems okay. And in lung ultrasound, we do see immediately something which can cause dyspnea. We do see a large pearl effusion. So the black area we see there, that's all effusions of free fluid in the pearl space. But it's not only that is a finding which is striking. We do see two more findings over here. We do see a consolidation and below the consolidation, something is moving. So for now, we summarize that the lung could be a problem. There is a relevant pleural effusion. And we have to say that pleural carcinosis is also likely due to the consolidation we did find. But there's another problem. We did say that we have seen ascites. You see it on the subcoastal image over here. And below the consolidation, there is this moving structure. We are not yet sure what this moving structure is. So we have to also scan the abdomen. We do see a situs and this weirdly filled structure in the abdomen. From this image, I was at all not sure what it could be. So what is your guess? Do you think that's the gallbladder? Is it probably a cyst? Is it the intestines, an abscess? Or is it specifically the stomach? Well, the gallbladder we can find quite easily with the help of abdominal ultrasound. We do see the gallbladder over here. It's located towards the liver, so the lower liver border. We again see a site surrounding the liver, also the gallbladder, but the gallbladder seems to be free of stones. So the structure we have seen before is most likely not the gallbladder. What could it be then? Well, if we not only use a longitudinal, but also a transverse plane, so several planes to image it, we can see that there is some probably metal inside of it. So we have to summarize that this most likely must be the stomach. 
we change from the echo transducer to a convex transducer, an abdominal transducer with an abdominal preset. On the left hand side, we see the heart. We also see the liver and there is a stent, a stent in the esophagus due to the carcinoma he has. And what we also see is that there is almost something like a pendulum peristalsis. So the food or the contents of the stomach are moving in and out of the stent. Now we have seen ascites, we did see that the stomach is quite full and there is somewhat of a pendulum peristalsis. We also scan more of the abdomen and we also find round nodular structures which are probably abdominal carcinosis. So to summarize, what did we overall see? We did see tumor infiltration probably of the abdomen, of the lungs and also probably of the heart. And we did see that the patient has an esophagus stent. Furthermore, in the lungs, there is a significant amount of free fluid, which could cause the dyspnea. The fluid was drained, the patient was feeling better and also the pain medication was of course adjusted. And with the help of ultrasound, we did find that there is a reason for dyspnea, it's most likely the proliferation, and we did rule out a hemodynamically significant pericardial effusion.